Hi everyone and welcome back to Chess for Charity. In this video, we're going to be looking at a retrograde puzzle where you have to figure out whether the pawn is on F5 or F4. One of these two squares, you know this pawn is on one of them. So if you're not familiar with these types of puzzles, they're really fun. It's pretty much like you're using logic and reasoning to work your way backwards. That's why they call it retrograde. Okay, so take a moment to acquaint yourself with the position. Perhaps you want to try to solve it on your own. Feel free to pause the video and try to work backwards to figure it out. If not, I'm going to go ahead and share the solution in just a moment. And while you're here, please subscribe if you have not already. It helps me out a lot. It also helps out charity. Okay, so let's talk about the captures and let's talk about the missing pieces. That's usually the first place that my mind goes in retrogrades. And of course, we know there's a capture with this pawn. We don't know where yet. So maybe there, there. We don't know anything about this pawn yet. So let's look at these missing pieces. Let's just start with the most obvious assumption, which really is the most obvious deduction. This bishop on c1 can't escape, right? These pawns are going up the board, and they can't move. So that means this bishop, and the same logic applies to this bishop, they must have been captured by the opponent's knight. So this bishop on c1 must have been captured by a knight, maybe this one, maybe this one. It doesn't really matter. For simplicity, I would just say this one. And the same goes the other way around. This knight, or this bishop on f8 was captured by a white knight. Okay, so what does that mean? That means we have two capturable pieces. We have a capturable, capturable piece on b1 and a capturable piece on f1. Okay, now how does that help us? Well, we notice that we have two captures here, one capture on b6 and one on c6. Can we make any conclusion about which capture was which piece? If you want to take a second to think about that, see if you can figure that out. If you're new to retrogrades, this is a good first step. OK, if you came up with it, great job. This bishop on f1 is a light squared bishop, which means it can only roam around on light squares, right? It can never touch a dark square because it's a light squared bishop. Therefore, there's no way it could have gotten captured on b6, right? How would it ever get there? It can't. It just can circle around, but it can never get to b6. Therefore, this bishop on f1 must have been captured on c6. And this pawn, of course, was on d7 and captured on c6. So we can lock this f1 bishop to this c6 capture. Cool. OK, that's helpful, but let's keep working. That also means that this b6 capture, we can associate that with this b1 knight. Doesn't exactly matter how they got there, but they got there. OK, so we have these two captures nailed down, this way and this way. OK, great. So how does that help us? Well, we see that we have a capture here on g3. And just like before, I have two things that could be captured on g3. I have the bishop on c8 and the knight on c on b8. Let's use the same logic here. This bishop on c8 could not have been captured on this square because this is a light squared bishop. It would never be able to get to this square, right? Hopefully my arrows are making that clear, you can't ever get there. So this c8 bishop must have been captured somewhere else. OK, we'll talk about that in a moment. It must have been captured on a light square, either this one or this one. We'll figure that out in a moment. OK, that means that this b8 knight we know got captured on g3, like this. OK, so now we're at the crux of the puzzle. This is kind of where all the fun begins if it's not already fun. It's fun for me. So c8, this bishop could either be captured here or here. Cool. And that would make sense, right? Any other place doesn't make sense because it's a light squared bishop. It couldn't have gotten captured any other place. OK, let's think about this. Because remember, the question is, we're trying to figure out where the pawn is. So if you want to tell me it's being captured here, that doesn't work because the pawn's here and here. OK, just make sure I am comprehensive there. So we have two options. How do we narrow them down? 
Well, a good tool in reasoning, and if you're familiar with logic and reasoning and maybe even philosophy, you can deduce things by contradiction. You can say, let's suppose it was captured on F3, and then run that logic all the way through, and if you reach a contradiction, then you know that this cannot be true, because something and its opposite cannot be true at the same time, right? This is introduction logic for you if you're new to it. Okay, well, let's assume that this bishop was captured on f3. So if that were the case, how would it have been captured? It would have been captured by the e-pawn, right? Of course, e takes f3. Now let's just see if that makes sense. How would this bishop get to this square? Not that square. How would it get to this square f3? Well, for it to get to f3, this pawn on d7 must have already captured, right? Hopefully you're still with me. This bishop cannot get out unless this pawn has already moved. Okay, but the only way that this pawn could have moved and captured was if it captured this bishop on f1. So this pawn that was on e2 must have moved prior to me getting my bishop out and getting it captured. So what does that mean? That means that f3 does not work as a place for the capture. Now let's run that through really quickly one more time. It's really interesting. This bishop needs to be captured. Oops, I'm flipping the board around. Sorry about that. This bishop, that was pretty, that was pretty wild there. Didn't expect that. This bishop on f1 needed to get out in order to get captured on c6. This allows white's, sorry, black's bishop to come out and get captured on either f5 or f3. So the point is, it can't get captured in f3 because that would have never let the bishop out to begin with. So hopefully that's making sense. Hopefully that flipping of the screen didn't destroy the rhythm there. It does make sense. And just to make sure one more time, if it doesn't, I'll try to clarify it one more time. So this bishop had to get captured in order to let this bishop out. So this f1 bishop was captured here. Let's use some colors. This c8 bishop has to get out. Well, it couldn't have gotten to this square on f3 unless this pawn has already moved. The only way this pawn would have moved if it didn't capture here. Therefore, it must be on f4. Sorry, on f5. So, let's show a proof game. I made a proof game. It's not that um, optimal, we'll say, but it works. So, I play e4 because I'm going to need to get this bishop out. I'm maneuvering my knights around just to capture those bishops that I need to take. And you'll see in just a moment how that's done. And now you'll see a key here. This bishop had to get out to give itself up on this c6 square. So pay attention to that right here. That allows the pawn to come out. Then the bishop comes out. I capture it. The knights now just maneuver their way around and get captured to create the pawn structure. The queens triangulate themselves just so that it's the right person to move. And this is the proof game right there. So this bishop came out in order to let this bishop out. And this bishop had to be captured on f5. Therefore, the pawn is on f5. All right, hopefully you stayed with that logic. It's a lot of fun. These retrograde puzzles are incredible. I love them, and hopefully some of you like them as well. I'll be making more of these. Um, I just really enjoy them. So if you enjoy them, leave me some feedback. Feel free to subscribe. Please like the video. Everything helps, and I just appreciate all the support. But that's it for now. Thank you so much. Bye.